Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about how to play a character that's not like you. Do you ever find yourself in a place where you keep playing the same character over and over, or do you maybe find that your characters slowly morph into this alternate universe version of yourself? If that's the case and you're looking to potentially change that, then this video is for you. So if you haven't done very much self-discovery type exercises in the past, the first thing I'm going to recommend is to sort of do something like that with a character. So think about whatever setting it is that you're working with, whatever role play you're about to apply to, whatever it is. And first, let's make a character that is literally you in that setting. The reason why we're doing this is because after you've made that character, we now have a template to compare the character you're actually going to use to that character. If you don't have a particular setting that you're working with for this and you're just sort of making a character without a setting in mind yet, what I recommend doing is watching my character symbolism video. I'll link that up in the card um, over here. Yeah, I'll link that up in the card. So go watch that and instead of doing it via a setting, pick out the symbols that represent yourself and we can use those for the compare activity that we're about to do. Now that you've got the template for the you version, go ahead and make your character. Then what we're going to do is put the you version and the character side by side and compare and contrast those two different characters and make a list of what is similar and what is different about the two characters that you've just made. Now ask yourself, is there enough differences for you to be happy with this character? If there's not, then consider what things are similar that you'd be willing to change about this character. If you're struggling with this exercise, another thing that might be helpful is instead of creating yourself as a character, create like a friend or a relative or an acquaintance as a character. The reason why this can be useful is because it's much easier to see the strengths and weaknesses of someone else than it is to see the strengths and weaknesses of yourself. So if you've created yourself as a character and they don't really have any weaknesses, then maybe redo the activity, but instead of you, do with a friend. And that way you've got a character now that has explicit strengths and weaknesses and you can compare the you character to that and think a little bit more deeply about yourself and what changes you might want to make to the character you ultimately end up using. If you do all of this, it's really going to help you make characters that are a lot more dynamic. And it's also going to help avoid creating those flawless characters that become uninteresting to your partners. So essentially, this is some stuff that we can do during the character creation process. But what about once you actually start role playing? It's really easy when employing those improv skills, instead of reacting how the character would react, to write how you would react to that situation. So how can we avoid this? The first thing to remember is your character is not a reflection on you. The actions your character takes don't say anything about you as a person. So if you are the sort of role player that gets really anxious about your character upsetting other characters, remember this. And most role players aren't really going to care about you upsetting their character. What they're going to care about is playing against another character that's really dynamic and interesting. Also, having a proofreading strategy is a great way to avoid this. So after you've written your post, before you post it, go ahead and read back through it and make sure that you still think that this is really how the character would react. If you're unsure, go back and read your character bio. Maybe if you've picked out symbols for your character, like we talked about in that previous video, go look at those symbols. Did the thing that you wrote in your reply match that bio? Did it match those symbols? Maybe why or why not? It can also be really helpful to use some of the techniques that I talked about in my finding inspiration video. So if you have some of those like playlists or Pinterest boards or things like that, regularly go review those so that it's fresh in your mind what the original inspiration for that character was. And uh, I'll link that video up in the card as well. And while you're doing all of this stuff, remember it's perfectly okay for your character to change as you role play them. In fact, they probably should because they should be shaped by the experiences that they're having just like a person is. So the thing that we're avoiding is the character slowly morphing into you. We're not trying to avoid the character changing over time. So what if you want to write a character that's radically different from yourself, that you can't write simply by observing others in your real life situation? 
Perhaps that means something like playing a character of a different background or different sexuality or different gender. Or maybe it's something a little bit more complicated, like playing a character from a different time period than yours. This is when you'll need to employ research. If you're talking about research within a modern setting, the best thing I know to do is turn to YouTube. There are YouTubers from literally every walk of life. You want to know how life is in a particular country. There are YouTubers in that country. If you are maybe, you know, straight and cis and you want to know more about life of an LGBT person or vice versa, there are YouTubers talking about that particular life. And if it's a modern setting, then getting a modern perspective is important and you're going to get that from real people on YouTube. So what I do in those situations is I find a vlogger that fits kind of what I'm looking for with the character and I'll go and watch their backlog of content to get an idea about what kind of opinions they have, how they portray themselves, kind of where they're coming from in their lives. And this is a great way to help the character feel authentic without accidentally slipping into your own assumptions about how the world works. Now, of course, if you're not writing in a modern setting, then instead of going to YouTube, we're talking about researching that particular time period. So that's going to be things more like reading books about it, looking at articles, looking at historical studies, um, archaeology, things like that. So if you're writing about those past time periods, just keep that in mind and use the appropriate resources for that time period. Another technique that you can use to keep yourself on track and keep your character from morphing into a version of you is to give yourself accountability. And the best way to give yourself accountability is tell a friend. So tell your friends what it is you're trying to do with that character and what it is that you're trying to improve on specifically. Even if it's friends that aren't necessarily going to call you out on it, you still need to tell them because what that's going to do is even if they're not going to call you out, you know now that the information is out there and you're more likely to stick to it because even if they're not going to call you out, you still know that you told them and you know that they notice. Now, of course, if you do have a friend that's going to call you out, absolutely tell them because that's an even better situation. But if you don't, that's okay. Just telling anyone will help. And then the last thing to remember is practice makes perfect. If you have always played self inserts or if you have always played a certain type of character, breaking out of that is going to take time and effort. So be patient with yourself and keep practicing. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.